Sand Hollow never disappoint with its amazing views and excellent wheeling. I'm your host, Rich Klein, and I'm here with our special guest, Gordon Bailey, owner of Bailey Built, an early Bronco fabrication company, and you're watching the hit show, Driver's Seat, the show that takes you, the viewer, along for a ride with the biggest names in sport. Today, we're on joint effort at Sand Hollow in Hurricane, Utah. Joint effort is rated 9 and is generally a buggy trail, but not today, as Gordon and a couple of his buddies show us how they conquer this trail in their full-bodied early Broncos. All right, here we are on the driver's seat. Gordon, thanks for joining us today. This Thank is uh, going to be pretty awesome, running joint effort in full-bodied Broncos. Like, normally a buggy trail, right? <laughs> We uh, we tend to do the stupid stuff in these things with our group. We go all over the country. Um, I was told about Trail Hero in its first year by Jake Good, who's in the Orange Bronco behind us. And then he ended up having some medical issues with his wife, as anybody who knows Jake, what their strife was. And um, But he got the connection made between you and I, and here we are today. <laughs> several years later yeah one thing I noticed you know these vehicles you guys know them really well and yours has a special story because of Jake's wife and you've been all over the United States with this thing yeah we will I think I've gone as far east as Fort Virginia and into Pennsylvania Roush Creek and I've been here I think we're farther west than when we were in Arizona at the Black Hills area and um, so we travel a whole lot of ground all over the country, and the business has been a blessing for us. So it allows us to do that. So what's some of the things that you see when you come into this? Because I know that we're at a pretty side angle right yeah, now, yeah. right? This is one of those that in in the Broncos, you know, we kind of, this is a 5,400-pound rig. It's quite heavy. So we plant these things pretty well and we've got to take a different line and you guys do that don't have any bodies in the way yeah i've got full if you buy a bailey built bumper this truck has full-size non-altered bailey built bumpers front and rear so exactly what i'm having issues with is what the clients have and i don't have anything modified other than adding door bars on this roll cage is i mean that's the only modification i have over doing what normal people get whenever they buy a Bailey Bill product. Nothing in that you get from me has been modified to make it better for off-roading than what we have here. So Now, I know that uh, I'm sitting here on the downside angle. <laughs> I see the rocks. I could literally just reach out and touch them. Yes. Luckily, you've got a heck of a roll cage here. It's been uh, tested. I've been actually... Jake was spot me. We were in Hot Springs, Arkansas several years ago, and uh, everything felt good. And I ended up flipping all the way to the roof off of a 30-inch ledge, and the body was in bad enough shape that I had to put a new body on it and uh, reuse the roll cage. So what we're doing here is the front dig. We're trying to get the front end pulled over here against the hill. And you can so see we're grinding on the grinding on the rock a little bit as you're here, <laughs> as you're here. But this ledge is too tall for my bumper to take. Yeah. So the only way to take the ledge is we got a sidewall onto the hill to get the bumper raised up. Oh, there you go. So kind of nice when you hit the line right the first time, especially when we're going just like this. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you look intelligent. So yeah. I got a little bit too steep on the wall there, so we'll kind of drive over here and look out of shape, and then we'll go and do the next place like we're supposed to. I don't know, hopefully. man. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> you might have, might have been a little out of shape, but the car, or the, the, the Bronco here, just did amazing. Yeah. It's very stable. Oh, look at this. This has a little undercut on it, and if you normally hit it with just the slightest bit of inertia, it just pops up like that, like you're supposed to. Yeah, that's okay. Hey, you know how it is. I've never done this filming stuff, and it's amazing how nervous you are. <laughs> <laughs> Why does that make it different? <laughs> it's, it's, I'll tell you what, man. It's just a, it's, they call it movie magic, right? <laughs> it's as bad as you know shooting competitions 
Yeah. And have putting a timer on you. Yeah. And they all call that the idiot box. It's like, boy, it makes you an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, so this obstacle is pretty crazy. Um, hey, this is definitely a buggy obstacle, and you guys are doing it in your Broncos. Yeah. And there's a lot of engineering that goes into your four-link design for the Broncos to be able to even do this. You want to talk about yeah. that a little bit? Yeah. Um, we, I try to build them where the trucks load the tires with more weight through torque load on the link where... Basically, when you accelerate, you're pushing down on the tire more than it weighs. And it kind of is a cheat. There is a side effect. It's called, you know, we build instant center into these things, and it's got a side effect of when you build too much of that in, they tend to hop. So it, it takes driver skill and kind of knowing your car. And, you know, when we do a suspension system for clients, we, uh, uh, it's not going to let me do that, so we're just going to stand the tire up over here, if you don't mind. Woo! Oh. Yeah. yeah, it's all good. <laughs> I got a tattoo of this right here on my chest. <laughs> <laughs> I drove this the first time by myself without a spotter. It was like life-changing, man, let me tell you. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Anybody who knows me knows Damon Hopper. His wife, Cindy's the one took the photograph. She's standing up over here taking pictures of everybody around behind us. I do this wheel thing like we just did. She turns to take one shot, and that's the tattoo. So, <laughs> man, I'll tell you, yeah. uh, there's one for where I thought we were about to roll over. <laughs> yeah, the but little truck just doesn't know any better. It just it, doesn't. It's just the obstacle. Man, I'll tell you, the, the thing. <laughs> as much as you know, being a buggy guy myself, I feel like um, stability is the key to success here, and I'm used to extreme angles. But what you're doing with, you know, your vehicle and, and how you're able to get through this, what I feel like is a rollover, you're just like, yeah, no big deal. We're right there, <laughs> but yeah. it's really it's really something that we can get through pretty easily. Right, right. Like I say, there's, there's times that I get a lot of novice people ride with me, and, you know, it's like then I get the evil husband to say, take my wife out and scare the crap out of her kind of thing so I can spend more money on my Bronco. Yeah. And it's funny, the wives all come back and go, yours is scary. We did scary stuff, but yours is scary. So <laughs> they kind of get what they want. You know, they get a little bit more of a budget. The wife understands that if you if you do this to one, they act better and they're not as scary. So yeah, it's a it's kind of a win-win situation. And I get somebody else sitting over in the passenger seat that I get to yammer to all the way that hasn't already told and heard my story. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you tell the same stories over and over again. They're new to everybody sitting next to you. Yeah. <laughs> well, so. Man, I'll tell you, this is uh, it's quite the experience to be able to do this in a Bronco. And, uh, but man, it's just, I've always done this trail in a buggy. Right. And now we're, I'm just, you know, amazed at how easy you make this look. Well, I'm going to show my ignorance up here. I promise you that. I just, here I am dipped out and hung up like a, like a turtle. That's okay. We're going to see what we can do. All right, so there we so are. We'll go, we'll, <laughs> now we're hung up on the rear, so we're going to go around that hole instead of drive through like we normally do. That's okay. So, it's all good, though. Now, this is a climb that is notorious for being like this full throttle, crazy assault for vehicles to get up. Yeah, we spent hours and hours on this, days back and forth, and I've kind of got for this truck to work the line figured out. But for the most part, we can kind of go. I'm preoccupied running over the girl. Nah. So don't worry about her. She signed the waiver. Is she signed the waiver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just don't want to use her for traction. <laughs> no, I don't think anybody yeah. wants that. No. <laughs> so, and then this one seems like this undercut gets to be more aggressive over on the passenger side. So I do my best to stay car driver in this hole. Yeah. Just a little bit of bump. And we pop right up. It's always great when stuff flies in your mouth from the wind. <laughs> it is a little bit windy, yeah, but you know, hey, the one thing I want to focus on is the sight. Like, 
Oh, Holy smokes, geez, yeah. this is amazing, you know. Where can you wheel in the desert? There's a lake right here, and it ends up showing up. And I can't tell you how many pictures I have. Yeah. More of them have the lake in the background, and it's just, it's like an anomaly. The mountains, the lake, I mean, you got every aspect for beauty yeah. that, that you want in this town. My first time driving in, I'm driving through the town, got my wife on the phone. I'm trying to concentrate here and yammer at the same time, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so good. Um, and uh, I go, I'm talking to my wife, Amy, and I go, uh, I think I found where I want to retire to. Yeah. And uh, she goes, what? Because you've never really ever talked that you wanted to move anywhere for that. It's like, I feel like I've been here. Well, this is an amazing so, place, you know. And you have the privilege to live here. And, you know, this is in your backyard. It takes me 18, 19 hours to drive here. And my friend Todd Foss is the Bronco in front of us. Yeah. He drives from Maine, usually down to Tulsa, where I live. And then we trailer up and then come out here. Usually we got a couple of, I might trailer pull three. And in the very back of the pack, hopefully you'll have, see him. He'll show up somewhere through here. Yeah. In the blue Bronco. His name's Tim White. So... We just did a four link in his rig, and he used to be Mr. Bypass. And Mr. I was just sit and watch, and this is his first outing with his rear four link. And he is on obstacles, he's doing them, he's feeling stable, learning his rig all over again. And he's it's one of those things is to have somebody have faith in a company like myself and to let me spend that kind of money on their rig. And to come out here and do this stuff, and instantly he feels what he's paid for. Yeah. And well, it's like obstacles that weren't even, he wouldn't even attempt before, he's doing them super easy and with not much challenge. Yeah. Which is just, that makes, you know, the money is part of the business, but whenever you have that type of a thank you, that's when I, I get paid. Yeah. Well, you know, you're able to, to put your engineering to the test in these vehicles. And, and really do things that people don't believe you should be able to do, yep. you know? And then when they get your your package on their vehicle and they're able to do the same thing, right. It, right. it opens their mind of their capabilities. They start exceeding as a driver even more. And uh, it just goes to show that, you know, you know your thing. You guys do a really good job at it. And in the Bronco world, in my opinion, you're where it's at when it comes to the, the term extreme, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that word's been used on me quite a bit. You know, you got high-level drivers in the best equipment possible, and you're showing it. You're on a buggy trail with a full-bodied vehicle when we're having the time of our lives right now. <laughs> Try to put on a good show. So hopefully this will be worthwhile for people to take their time with and see what we do and how we do it. and get some of the fear out because I, there's that stereotype that for to go extreme you got to be all this big major throttles and tire burnouts and all this craziness and we're this group is a finesse group we take pride in leaving the rocks as we found it and my goal you know usually is where I don't tear the trail up for the guy behind me and the guy in front of me doesn't tear, tear the trail up for me, so we leave it as we found it. And I'm just skirting this rock up there on the front quarter, so. Oh, there's a the grill. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, it's like you, there's times that we get body body damage. I get a lot of people go, well, why are your four corners your Bronco all tended up? It's like, well, if you had to come with me one time, you'll understand why. So. Yeah. Well, and a lot of that has to do with your high clearance bumpers, you know, a, a larger bumper design wouldn't have been able to make that turn, right? True. Yes, so true. So we're we're catching a lot of obstacles in in the rigs since they weigh so much. We try not to square up on them, where we're achieving obstacles basically one tire at a time. Yep, and that makes it easier on the the equipment to gain the obstacle and let the truck work and let the suspension do what it's here for and to apply the force to the ground properly. And uh, like I say, it's, 
really more difficult to talk and drive than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to like goose this front end around a little bit here. So you're in front dig. I'm in a front dig right now, which I'm applying power to the front axle only. Right. And I'm actually applying the brake to try to hold the rear where it is so I can like drag the front end sideways. To okay. It's give and me, so give down me more here, turning. you have cutting brake, you have uh, front and the rear, and then your um, transmission. transmission, right? Right. So, and I'm in and out of neutral all the time. I'm in and out of the transfer case. The cut brake, I, I use that. I, I probably ought to use that more than what I do, but. You know, I think you're doing pretty well. Yeah. Now, now this is an interesting turn because your passenger side has to be on the line perfect, yeah. right? Yeah, and this is one of those that driving this by myself and not having a spotter out in front is, is, a, is a new experience. So to have a passenger over here tell me to go a little bit, a little bit faster, a little bit faster is so comforting because everything's blind otherwise and you end up dropping off and getting all crazy here, which, ta-da, we actually hit that line really close. <laughs> yeah. So, as you can see kind of in front of us, we're gonna ride this ramp down on the passenger side. That way we're not totally out of shape and smashing the girl in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> now that's the girl in front of us is Holly, Mr. Mischief Maker TV on YouTube. And, uh, man, she's, uh, taking her time to come out here and, and help us uh, film, so uh, we appreciate that. Yeah, kudos, kid. And where this next obstacle we're coming up to is a pretty, it's a pinchy v notchy deal, and as Rich was saying a little bit ago, this is a buggy trail, and a lot of this stuff, these full-size rigs don't fit through. Yeah. <laughs> So we're going to come down here and the wall is directly in front of us. We're going to get up as close to that as we can. Hopefully this thing will let me do a front dig so I can square up on the V notch and then squeeze this fat bottom girl through this tight notch. <laughs> so. Is it going to climb? That's the question. Yeah. Oh! I'm going to grind that rocker off a little bit more. That's what you have it for, right? That, that's, that's one way to lighten the rig. <laughs> you grind it off an ounce at a time. <laughs> so, But you know, th that armor that you've designed, it's perfect. You're not getting into the body too much, or really anything at all. And it's just the right spacing to keep you off the rock and get through the obstacle. Yeah, yeah. I knew that I was doing that whenever I did it, but I don't really ever think to just talk about it. So good good points there made. So we're gonna come off this ledge. We're gonna drive down the center of this V notch because that's the hardest way to come off of this thing. So that's what we do. This little ledge over on the driver's side that we're gonna drop off of we're gonna hit this the rocker on this side as we come down because there's more drop than what there is clearance. It's gonna be a little bit bang. Oh, there it is. So. <laughs> oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> then another bag. <laughs> so, this part is where we normally stop and eat lunch. Yeah. We normally have giant groups. And if I understand correctly, this is where joint effort overlays on double sandy? Yeah, so double sandy actually comes the opposite direction and they wrap around. And then we run through and try to get through double Sammy essentially before the next group comes in at an event right. or anything like that, you know? And so, so this is a little bit of a straight spot in here that you just gotta get up to the next obstacle. Yeah. But you know, this is uh, one of those things that Give us a little bit of time to talk about, you know, when you started Bailey Build. How long have you been doing this for? We started in 04, and I kind of got introduced to Broncos. It was almost an accident. My wife was working in radio, and another co-worker, her husband had a Bronco. 
and I keep bugging the wife, going, "Hey, let's go, let's go play truck, let's go play truck." Yeah. And my wife goes, "I don't really want to do any of that stuff." So, and here's this other guy named John, and his wife was having the same symptoms that my, my wife was having. She didn't want to go do that. So the two girls ended up putting us together. I had a Toyota pickup at the time. Okay. And he had an early Bronco. So we went over on this land that's pretty close to the house and went out in my little Toyota pickup. And I had a locker in the back and I just thought I was going to be able to climb trees, <laughs> get, climb up the clouds, all this stuff. We went out and got the night on almost everything. I was frustrated. And John is so casual, so laid back. He goes, let's go get the Bronco and see how that happens. Yeah. How, how it'll do. I've owned it for a while and never had it really off-road. We go back and achieve everything that we tried. And I come back and I'm grinning like a little 12-year-old kid, you know, that just found the candy store. And uh, my wife, you know, I see the fear in her eyes going, she knows what the next hobby is going to be. So Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, so I got to introduce to them that way. And John bought registrations to an event over in Hot Springs, Arkansas, which is the Oklahoma Classic Bronco Roundup. Uh-huh. And... He was trying to get his wife to go. He bought, you know, two passes, and she refused to go. And I was suggested to go into her place. So he and I went over there together, and it's been history ever since. I come back, I, two or three weeks later, I bought my Bronco, and this is it. <laughs> it started off as a factory half cab. It was the Arkansas Forestry Division captain. And my understanding, if the story was told me correctly, this is what I've been repeating forever. The Arkansas Forestry Divisions would buy the green wagons for the minions, and they would buy the, the red half cabs for the captain. Okay. So if a red half cab pulls up on a fire, everybody knows to Salute. pay attention and yeah. don't do the stupid stuff in front of the captain. So, and I ended up with one of the red half cabs. Oh, okay. So, and that's the evolution of this. And as of now, if I'd have known how precious the half cabs were, I would not have done all of this through U14 VIN number which sure. is a half cab. I got just one of the regular wagons. So. Now Todd just made that, and that's, this is a total buggy line. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> Hopefully we can do it too. So put it, put it to bed and get up on this thing, so. So I do this in the Trail Hero buggy, and I'm not as, uh, I don't, do it as quick as you do usually <laughs> your wheelbase works out well the engineering you have into the suspension works out really well and then your driving ability I, i'll be honest you just made that look like child's play like well there's there's plenty of buggy guys that have such a hard time with that and i mean you literally just made that look like your me. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> I, you know, it's like I tried that line last season at Trail Hero. We had a big group of the Texas guys with us, all Broncos, and a lot of the Bronco guys are, are more buggy than I am. And um, it felt really good to try line. And honestly, I pulled up on that line last or in, you know, during the event last year. And I was sitting there thinking, I'm going to poke at this and kind of see what I can do and how far I can go. And I'll, all I'll do is back off of it. Sure. And darn at the end of it, if I just know we were going to <laughs> So, like I say, it's one of those, like, there's times that you pull, I pull up on something and just to poke at it and just see what it feels like. And, you know, if the truck feels like it wants to take it, I continue with it. And if, if it doesn't feel it, I tend to get out of it and go do something else that's a little bit more sane. Well, and that, that actually goes into, you know, feeling the vehicle and making sure you're doing what it wants so you get through the obstacles. It's a huge yeah. part of this. Yeah. And the only way to get that feel is seat time. Yeah. You, you can buy the best equipment on the planet. You can do, you know, if you don't have seat time. In the None of it matters. And the familiarity with it. I mean, you can, like, say, the good equipment's going to perform by good equipment, or like good equipment does. Yeah, and you can put a guy that has a little bit lesser equipment that has a whole lot of seat time will outdrive somebody with the most spectacular equipment in zero seat time just because you know <clears throat> he has the conditioning and of feeling what the rig feels like and not 
wetting himself as he's going through an obstacle. So what do you call, I mean, you've got an interesting name for this obstacle right here. (laughs) (laughs) Oh. Over to our left, which is driver's side, uh, I affectionately refer to this as the hole of death. Because with as out of shape as we both feel right here, if you fall into that hole, I'm pretty convinced it's going to be death. <laughs> so that's the, uh, we're leaning like a like a bugger here. We're like 30, 35 degrees sideways. I got one of those tilt gauges. Yep. And um, it just feels rotten because it dips down in the middle where the waters wash all the uh, rock away over the years. And um, so you're kind of sliding into it more than normal. And, uh, and again, this is another one of these ledges that is just too big for the bumper to clear. So we're going to attempt to do a front dig here and pull the front end uphill and get it where the steer tire will grab the ledge before the bumper. We'll do that there it a little is. bit. And then we're going to add back the four wheel drive. So the back's pushing on the front, the front's pulling on the back. And again, we're going to hit this obstacle one tire at a time. Oh, that was a bonus. We had one tire at a time plus one rocker. <laughs> <laughs> so, try to do is, and I've learned over the years that if you're hitting them, hitting obstacles, big ledges like that one tire at a time and you don't square up on it, you can be a lot easier on your equipment because only one side of the axle is trying to climb at a time. Sure. With the suspension compressing, in working, it allows that tire to climb so it lifts the whole back of the vehicle or front of the vehicle, whichever is the appropriate deal. So, as we're grinding some more on the rock, and again, this is another one of those where we're leaning about 45 degrees sideways, <laughs> and you can hear that in my voice. <laughs> <laughs> this rig usually will lean about 50 degrees, 52 degrees, and then once you exceed 52 degrees, it goes to the roof. Yeah. Well, let's not do that. <laughs> I'm not going. I'm just trying not to. Especially where we're getting ready to go. This yeah. is a Z turn, <laughs> and you know what you'll see right now is a vehicle that's actually driving right above us, and you see Todd there in frame, and we drive underneath him to get set up for the the turn. It's pretty wild to to think that you know if he rolled back, he'd be right on top of us. Give the girl room to get up the hill so we can get on it. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your maneuver here? What do you do? I'm actually climbing the wall, and this thing gets way up there, and it gets feeling like way out of shape. So we're going to have to kind of work around on this just a little bit. And the goal is is to keep the back tires down in the lowest part of this V-notch here at the base. Okay. So you don't have to climb with the tires as you're going up the V-notch itself. Sure. And with how the wind changes the sand from day to day, the line changes from day to day. Oh yeah. And because the driver, the passenger side's going way up the hill hard and fast. And the passenger side is down here in this hole in the sand. <laughs> so you're trying to balance the car. And I get up in here and I do a front dig, pull the front end over. And of course, hopefully we're gonna hope the rocks help hold us keep the rear end from moving sideways or downhill at all Yeah. to get the front end past this vertical side of the ledge that's over here now on the driver's side. So I'm going to stick my head out the window here, look like a dog on the highway, see if we can go ahead and get on up this thing. And on my side, the tire is literally <laughs> hanging off the edge. Yes. But I don't see that side, so it doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> So, and then we're going to turn this, the Z turn. It seems like we turn about 130 degrees back on yourself. And then we turn another 130 degrees to go on uphill. So we're going to use these ledges as our, to our benefit. Kind of get the front end up forward. Go back and do a front dig and just let the hole, the wall hold the back tire in place. Sure. So, and then that'll like rip the front end of the car around. So I don't let the back up and steer two or three times. You know, because backing off a wall or a wall or a ledge like this is pretty uh, unnerving, as we just did. <laughs> so, and again, this is a nervous jitter. It's 
filming something as you're driving. It's like, sure. One, you're not used to talking, and then two, to just have the knowing of everybody's going to see what you've done. Yeah. <laughs> and it's recorded forever. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> we'll never let you live it down. <laughs> so, like I say, you know, now we're basically right on one of these fins. Yeah. Right, driving straight up the ridge of this thing, and we're ascending about 30, 35 degrees. And uh, you look down on both sides, and it's, it'll be collateral damage if, if you choose to find one of those bottoms. Pending doom. Yeah, pending doom. <laughs> Which is always the best part, because that's the adrenaline rush. Why we're out here doing this stuff in the first place. I mean, we say all the time, it's like, I think doing drugs would be cheaper, but this is legal. <laughs> <laughs> so... You know, and way cooler. Yeah, way cooler. It's like, and you can you can do it in front of people. I mean, heck, you can even film it, put it on the internet. It's still okay. <laughs> so my last time over this obstacle, I went through all this hard stuff, and then it ended up dipping out right here, just like a junior junior guy getting stuck on the parking spot. So, hey, we made it through that one. <laughs> it's like I always feel silly whenever I'm able to do the big stuff, and then you you dismiss the little rocks. And they come up and say, hey, we're here, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. Happens well, to all of us. And where we're at right now, it's a, kind of a squeeze, you know, trying to fit through this. But with the way you guys have mapped out these vehicles, they're really the perfect width. And you can fit through parts that, that you know, buggies and full-size vehicles can't do. And yeah, they got to go up on one side or, or bridge both sides of that one. I'm sure yeah. that's pretty intimidating getting getting the bridging that one. Well, and then on top of that, you guys, I mean, the vehicles you guys built are very well mapped out. The tires are appropriate width out from the body so that you're not really doing any damage. You've got the armor for the vehicle. Yeah, You've got yeah. the rocker panels, uh, guards. You've got the bumpers. And everything's built so that when somebody drops off a, a Bronco with you, they're getting the full meal deal cage, all the armor and specs that you would run yes. in your rig. Yes. I, I don't hold any punches. Whenever somebody comes in for me to do a build, they get the best that I can do, period. Yeah. It's like we're a little tiny shop that does extraordinary stuff. So we're gonna, uh, go uh, Holly in, in front of us is like running backwards it's or like, running forward yeah. with the camera pointing backwards. And uh, I don't know if you could see her out there, but it's pretty fun. <laughs> it's like, all we got to do is sit in here and push on the belt to work the steering wheel. It's like, I can imagine the athletic ability she has to have. And then Mike behind us is doing the same thing. And, yep. you know, he's his lucky he gets to walk forward. Yeah. So she's trying to figure out where, so she doesn't run to the back of Todd and doesn't get under my tires either. So with... Obviously, this being one of your passions, off-roading and, and running the Bronco, building and fabricating, what's some of the other stuff that you guys just enjoy doing when you're not here? When like, we're not, yeah, when we're doing what we call the chase. Right. Because I still, I think I got my wife convinced that I'm working this week. And um, when we go on vacation, we we have a, we own a condo down in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. As you might see, my hat is red rum, and that's one of the deep sea fishing adventures that we use. And they've been super accommodating. Sorry, I'm trying to <laughs> make sure I'm off my eyes. They've been super accommodating. We have, uh, every time we've been out with them, we've caught fish. And I had no idea until our first time of trying that that, you know, when you have your thing, deep sea fishing is my wife's thing. Oh, that's cool. And so... I would love it if my wife liked fishing yeah. or deep sea fishing. She gets seasick. And, oh, boo. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Amy's... I don't know if it's conditioning over the years, but she's kind of used to all my antics. And now my antics are just <laughs> what normal is. Yeah. So being on the boat, <laughs> it's kind of like being in this. Awesome. So, yeah. I tell you, the wind's not as bad as we thought it was going to be. Yeah, no, this has turned out to be a great day up yeah. here. So we're going to go back in a front dig here, try to do a whole lot of maneuvering and a little bit of room. 
And if we position the vehicle properly at this ledge that we're achieving first, hopefully it'll make that second ledge a little bit easier. Sure. And we're actually bypassing, there's a obstacle, I don't know if it showed up on camera, that is, I've been told several times that it is a four-wheel steer type of required obstacle. And uh, as we're just turning around here, turning sideways and not going forward anywhere, I'm going to add four-wheel drive <laughs> and go forward. So we skipped that part. Uh, we've had one of our Bronco buddies, one of the guys from Texas, has a four-steer car. He got down in that thing and was able to achieve it. Yeah. There was one guy come by, we still don't know who in the world he is, that you know, he just showed up as Walters in the middle of this thing and fought them through it. And um, then he kind of went away. It's like, huh. like they not not having a clue on who who he is or who he was. But thank you very much. So it was fun to see somebody actually make that. Yeah. And um, so we bypassed the the most wicked part of that, which is like directly over to my right hand side here, that's off camera. And yeah. um, so we drop in directly behind it because we do stupid stuff. And. Um, so Todd's working on trying to get his front end worked around because his bumper is getting hung up on the rock. And um, you just got to kind of rip the front end around because we're dropping in a very deep ravine here that the uh, sidewalls are quite steep in. Sure. And then as soon as we get squared up, we got to turn left and get right back out of the ravine. But that's where the obstacle is. Right. That's, that's what we drove here for. So, and going down this ravine you got to kind of hit it sideways driver side down and for me that's the most uncomfortable of, of positions for the vehicle driver side down so i'm going to go back and do a front dig on this a little bit i'll keep the tires from lifting as much and uh i'm one of these that we've learned over the years that too much wheel travel is too much wheel travel yep and it's overrated yeah yeah that's true I'm going to go ahead and continue on down this obstacle in front wheel drive only. See if we can hit this thing just right. I just want to say we're side hilling and there's a huge hole on the driver's side and it's really big. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm uncomfortable too. Don't you? <laughs> but. You know, another testament to your bumper, clearing this rock right here, line choice as well, and, you know, you're able to squeeze right around. That, that's more line choice. I, I'd love to compliment the bumper, but that was line choice. So. And that was front wheel drive. And what I do on downhills with this rig is it seems like whenever I leave it in four wheel drive, it feels like it's humped up in the middle yeah. and kind of angry with itself. So whenever I go down something, I pull the rear out, and then I can apply the brakes. And you, as you kind of are seeing, it's idling downhill, which why would you want to throttle downhill anyway? Yeah. And that's in, especially in something precarious like we just gone through. And um, so you're able to apply the brakes, which drags the rear axle, and it kind of sucks the belly of the car down so it clamps it on the rock better. Yeah. And it's, that's one of the hardest techniques that I was taught over the years. And one of the comp guys told me about that, and I thought he was setting me up for a fall. No, no. And I tried it once, and I've been doing it ever since. <laughs> so and we're going to do another front dig right here, kind of just, just for positioning. And this, if I remember right, I think is the last obstacle of the trail. And we get way high on the driver's side over here. Hopefully I got that line. Hold where we clear the body. I'd probably go to front dig again. Go back to that. We'll do that. At the back, ah, that worked well. What's that, Rich? I've done this a couple times. The, the man who knows his rocks. <laughs> <laughs> and why somebody wouldn't listen to that advice <laughs> makes <laughs> no sense. <laughs> but people uh, think they know more. It's like you're local. These, this is your backyard, man. Yeah. I'm going to use your seat as a steady for myself. Like, say, the truck's going to get, like, yeah, way, way, <laughs> way hot. And I love, if you haven't noticed, Rich has a couple different laughs. Yeah, yeah. The one you're hearing now is the nervous laugh. And we may 
we may be in an issue here. There it is. See if we can move this rear end over a little bit more. Whoa, shit. <laughs> well, that's new. That's not playing nice. There it is. There it is. Okay, we'll move this rear end over a little bit more and that'll help us out. Yeah. Oh, you got to put a show on for the camera. <laughs> there you go. I didn't want that kind of a show. <laughs> Well, the part is I'm trying to keep the body out of the rock over on this side. Yeah. Which, I don't know if it's better to drive on that rock, try to come square it up with it, or... The good thing is if we do flop over sideways, we don't have far to fall. Yeah. <laughs> there is a plus there. So, I think we're there. Hopefully we can do that with... Yay, we did that without killing the fender. <laughs> <laughs> so... We're up, Dad. Well, let's let's put that as at least like number three or four yeah, of or feeling like I was gonna roll over one of seven. <laughs> but so, nobody still, died. Nobody died. Right there, nobody died. It's a good day. <laughs> you know, uh, amazing job on the trail. We just finished the last obstacle. This was uh, an experience for me. Uh, definitely hope the viewers enjoyed um, all the crazy angles. Your tech and getting to know a little bit more about you. Thanks for uh, joining us here on the driver's seat. Thank you for the opportunity. Appreciate it. Yeah, you know, um, anytime you want to go wheeling, just give me a call. Uh, just awesome job, and <laughs> I can't, uh, can't wait for you to, to meet us back out here and do this all again. We'll see you this October for Trail Hero. All right, man. Thanks. Take care. Okay, there we there. are. Yep. Okay, look at that. <laughs>